Let's go ahead and create a tank structure. So I'm going to go to the model tab in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. I'm going to click on the structure wizard. Okay. Now this is going to bring up the structure wizard, basically dialog. Nothing's in the STAD Pro model yet. I'm still basically creating it over here. I can rotate it, kind of take a look to see how it's going to look. Okay. I can enter the total number of compartments I'm going to have. I'm going to enter three compartments. I could enter all of my geometry information. Now I'm using Imperial units um, for today's session. One of the nice things about STAD Pro, the STAD Pro Physical Modeler is that unit abbreviations are understood by the program. So say I wanted to say my base thickness, that's my base slab is 18 inches instead of one, saying 1.5 feet. I can go ahead and type in inches and it will automatically interpret that and convert it for me. I don't have to play around with unit configurations. I'm gonna enter the total length of my system, the total width of my system. Let me go ahead and increase this to, let me go with 40 feet. Okay, I'm gonna go to a toe to edge of walls. That's basically this distance here. So here's the end, it's going out there, okay? Does it have columns? So it could either be with columns or without, you could see what that basically does for us. I'm gonna say mine has columns. Number of columns per compartment, I'm gonna say one. So that's gonna be one column. If you had two, it'd be two adjacent columns equispaced um, within the, the bay, okay? You can enter your column width, column depth. It's going to give you a beam that goes across and we can enter those parameters as well. Now, there is one step that I had wanted to do before getting to this place, which was actually creating my material properties. I want to assign that while I'm here too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save. So now one of the advantages of the structure wizard is you are able to save your data. Okay. I'm not going to transfer it to my model as of yet. I'm just going to go ahead and close down. Didn't create anything yet. Okay. Because I remembered I wanted to do another step. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to this catalog area. Now it is helpful to set up your materials. If you notice my material pull down menu was empty. I wanna be able to assign the concrete material. I could always assign it later. I like to do everything in one stop. So I'm gonna come to this catalog area, click on this material option. I'm gonna add the concrete material. Let's go ahead and click okay. All right, I'm gonna go back again. Let's go back to my structure wizard. You can see everything I entered already has been saved. Okay, so I didn't lose anything even though I forgot a step. Okay, it's all been saved. I can still change it if I want, but it, what did save it to basically the template. Okay, now my material properties can be assigned right away. Okay, now do I have a roof slab? That'll be basically a slab over the top. Without a roof slab, what it's going to basically be is an open system, depending upon what you need out of the program. Okay. With the roof slab, you're able to enter a slab thickness. And this is new in, in um, update six. Is it a simple supported slab? Okay. Typically you would have your slabs and if everything shares nodes, then it wouldn't be simple supported, but this is new that's being added um, in the program. I'm going to go ahead and say mine is not simple support. I'm going to go with a more traditional, traditional method. Now the supports, I'm going to go ahead and say this is on soil and I'm going to enter my soil modulus. Okay. For the loading, do I want to generate load cases or load groups? So that's a choice that you have available to you. One thing I'm, I'm going to mention about load groups, however, is that load groups only get their results once an analysis is performed. So if you're performing any type of second order analysis or want like repeat style load cases, then I typically would recommend sticking with the load cases. That way it gives you the most flexibility later on. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with load cases. Okay. Include self weight. I'm going to say yes. It'll automatically know that that's being applied to my dead load. Do I want a roof surcharge? I'm going to say yes. A roof surcharge will be applied as a dead load. Okay. Do I have a roof live load? I'm going to say yes to that. Here is my fluid density. So I'm going to assume that my tanks are supporting water. And then I could enter my fluid heights per compartment. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say compartment one will be 150 inches. And then 
compartment two will be a little bit less, and then we'll go back up for compartment three. So you can enter these independently um, of each other, okay? So let's go ahead and click OK. Now the program will be able to calculate the fluid height, multiply it by the fluid density, and then give you that trapezoidal load on the walls of your system, each tank getting its own load case for that. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. This is in case I want to come back uh, to add another time. And now I'm ready to transfer my data. You saw earlier, all I did was exit out of this. Obviously, it saved, but it didn't transfer it to um, the physical modeler. I'm now at the point where I'm ready to transfer it to the physical modeler. And I'm going to make um, a decision. Where do I want it to go once it goes over to the physical modeler? Okay. What I'm going to see is I'm going to see the UCS, or basically what I consider the origin of my tank system, is drawn right here. Okay, if this works for you, you're ready to transfer your template. If you want to customize your insertion point or your origin of your system, you can go ahead and change it by clicking on this reference point icon. So here I'm going to go ahead and click here and say, I want this to be my reference point, for example. It'll go ahead and put that. Then when you transfer your template, you're going to say insertion point, which will coordinate with where does this node go, okay? So at this point, I'm ready to transfer my template over to the physical modeler. I'm going to transfer my template. It's going to ask me where is it going based on where that origin is. And if I want, one of the features I like about the physical modeler is several dialogues have this preview button. This also works for things like translational repeat, circular repeat, mirror. Um, I like it because what it'll do is it'll go ahead and give me an outline of what this is going to look like. It went ahead and reminded me where my origin is. Okay, that's going to be at zero, zero, zero. Okay, so I'm previewing it. I like it. If I wanted to cancel, I can come back. I can move that reference point, come back again. Okay, um, I'm going to commit this to my physical modeler. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, it went ahead and created um, my data for me. Now, at this point, I don't really need this first load case, but it's not really hurting anything for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Okay, it did go ahead and create these additional load cases for me, though. So here I can see I have my dead load. Self weight was applied to the dead load. I have my roof live load, and then I have my fluid loads. Each compartment gets its own fluid load case. Okay, let's go ahead and see some of that data as it was transferred over to the physical modeler. Okay, um, now again, the way I'm going to go ahead and navigate the physical modeler is through the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar. So this is where I can see all the data that was basically assigned. And as you remember, this model was basically blank minus one load case that was in it when I started, okay? So say, for example, I want to take a look at my surfaces. Here I can see all my surfaces um, that were created. I can go ahead and take a look at the properties. Now you can see again that concrete material was assigned um, to both of them. I have the thickness of those. Now, this is a newer tool that's available in Update 6. This is my edge restraint. You can see everything is here is fixed. Had I told it my, that my slab was simply supported, it would go ahead and say pinned here. We can specify that in Update 6 basically on the edges or also on your corner restraints um, as well. So everything is, is set basically to its default because I didn't use those features within the structure wizard, OK? Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the loads that were created. So new in update six, I have this new loading tab. And what we're going to do right now, I don't really see any loading. That's because I'm on load case one, which is empty. So let's go ahead and access um, my dead load. Now, the way I have this set is I'm having it display my load. So if you don't see your loads, um, this might not be selected. So here I can see that that surcharge load was added as a dead load. If I wanted to take a look at my roof load, that would be my roof live load has been added again to the roof of my system. If I didn't have a roof slab, then I wouldn't have these loads that would have come over. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look at my compartment loads, okay? So these are the fluid loads. It went ahead and took, I use the density of water, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Um, my height of my fluid 
was for this compartment 150 inches. So it was able to basically calculate the trapezoidal load on each one of these uh, walls. Now, the way the program does that is it basically creates a region and assigns it to that region, assigns the load to that region. So regions are available in, I believe they were added in update three. So again, you're gonna wanna update your SAD Pro if you don't have at least that. And basically what a region is, is it's used to model um, basically something within a slab, something that's different that basically the whole slab or the whole wall has uh, different than it. And for this example, it's being used to basically modify loading. So the loading isn't in, over the entire surface, it's over a portion of the surface. So we used a region to create that geometry. When else would you use a region? Well, if you had any type of anything different for a particular area of an overall surface that didn't necessarily apply to the entire surface. So if you wanted to create your own mesh density for a particular region, you could do that. If you wanted to create your own loading like we have here, if you wanted to basically say one particular area was a little thicker than the rest of the wall, then regions could also be used in that application. So you can see here, we automatically calculated what the load is at the top, it's at zero. And then as it works its way down those 150 inches, it was able to calculate what the magnitude of the maximum load is. So here we have compartment one, com well, I would call it compartment two, and then we have our last compartment. Now, we use the structure wizard as basically a modeling tool. This was our fastest way of getting this type of geometry within the system. Now, it is in the system now. So at this point, it is fair game. If you need to modify anything, if you want to um, change the magnitude of load or the thickness of the slab or anything else like that, uh, you are able to do that within um, the STAD Pro physical model. Are you able to make changes after you're at that step? If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.